Hello folks and welcome back to my channel Cancer Zappers by ABBA. I'm really excited about today's episode as I get to talk about Marie Curie. If you like more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the link below. Also, what do you think about Marie Curie? Comment or ask questions. Marie Curie, born Maria Sklodowska, was one of the most highly esteemed pioneering scientists of her day. Born in Poland on November 7, 1867, Maria moved to France in 1891, where she would study physics, chemistry, and mathematics at the University of Paris. She met and married her husband Pierre Curie, a soon-to-be professor at the Sorbonne, a common name for the University of Paris. She collaborated with Pierre Curie to write individual and joint papers about polonium and radium, the latter of which was found to have therapeutic effects on tumor lesions. She was awarded a PhD in physics in June of 1903. This was also the year in which she would be the recipient of a shared Nobel Prize in physics, becoming the first woman to win a Nobel Prize. This prize was shared among two others, her husband Pierre Curie, and another French engineer and physicist, Henri Becquerel, who was the first person to discover evidence of radioactivity in 1896. He discovered it while Marie and Pierre Curie studied it extensively. Prior to that, in 1895, another German physicist by the name of Wilhelm Röntgen had discovered X-rays. He was the first to win a Nobel Prize in physics. Thanks to Röntgen for his discovery of X-rays, although the mechanism wasn't quite understood, we now know X-rays are highly energetic electromagnetic waves that can penetrate through matter. X-rays can be created through the acceleration and subsequent deceleration of electrons hitting a metal target. Soon after Röntgen's discovery of X-rays, Marie Curie had developed mobile X-ray vehicles known as Little Curies. These were elemental in wartime efforts to obtain X-ray images of injured soldiers to locate bullets and other foreign objects. The joint Nobel Prize received by the Curies and Becquerel was on the theory of radioactivity, which is a process where an atom's nucleus emits particles and or gamma rays that are essentially X-rays that come from the nucleus of the atom. This was a very exciting time in physics with all these new, close-together findings that would change long-held beliefs in the field of physics. Originally, Marie Curie had not been included as a recipient of the Nobel Prize award until her husband Pierre Curie complained about the situation. As fate would have it, Pierre Curie would be tragically killed by a horse-drawn carriage in April of 1906. The following month, the physics department at the Sorbonne invited Marie Curie to fill the chair position voided by her late husband. She then later founded the Curie Institute in 1920, which still exists today and is one of the leading medical, biological, and biophysical research centers in the world. Marie Curie went on to win her second Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1911 for the discovery of polonium in July of 1898, named after her birth country Poland, and radium in December of 1898. She thus became the first woman to have won two Nobel Prizes in two different fields. It seemed her ability to work excellently was contagious. Her husband won a Nobel Prize which was indeed shared with her and Becquerel, her eldest daughter and son-in-law won one as well. Albert Einstein, who also met Marie Curie, noted how selfless and generous she was. Mind you, he even won a Nobel Prize. Her findings on radium and the process to attain it were not patented in spite of the growing business opportunities that existed. Perhaps she believed it to be too important of a resource to seek to benefit from personally. From watches and compasses to aircraft instruments, radium paint was finding its lucrative niche. The paint was luminous, which helped these dials to be read in the dark. We all remember too well the radium girls of the 1920s and 30s 
who were encouraged to restore the tips of the paintbrushes by applying them to the corners of their lips in order to create a fine tip for detailed work in radium painting, hence ingesting some radium, which resulted in cases of bone and blood cancers and deaths. Radium lies in the same column of the periodic table as calcium, so like calcium, when radium is ingested, is absorbed by the bone, and hence the bone, along with the blood, become the target of radioactivity. But the depth of all these dangers was not really at the forefront of people's minds in the age of initial discovery. The health benefits when applied to cancerous lesions was evident. But in July 1934, Marie Curie would soon be the victim of the work she so passionately shared with the rest of the world. Aplastic anemia due to radiation exposure was the culprit, or so it was and is believed. She was buried in the Pantheon beside her late husband. Her coffin is lined with lead as a safety measure. Today, we celebrate Marie Curie for her generous, innovational mindset and the way she impacted the scientific and medical fields. In modern day treatments, radium is not used as much since it has been replaced with isotopes that require less shielding demands and are therefore safer to work with, like cesium-137, iridium-192, iodine-125, to name a few. Today, these are used to treat cancers of the uterus, prostate, breast, and many more. Around the world, several people benefit from the use of these isotopes in attacking tumors by having these radioisotopes inserted into cavities or tissues within the body. So, so now it's going to go to channel one. So now radiation is being delivered. So it's starting to, you can see it on channel oh, one. Yeah, look at that, it's darkening. Yeah. I'm gonna step back. Oh, yes, this is what we're looking for. Radium-223, or Zovigo, which is a more recent radiopharmaceutical, mimics calcium. It is a more short-lived form of the radium discovered by Marie Curie, but is still related. As mentioned, radium lies in the same column of the periodic table as calcium. When injected, a percentage of the radiation ends up in the bone the same way drinking milk allows calcium to be absorbed in bones. This radiation can target metastasis to the bone in some patients with advanced prostate cancer. November 7th is the birthday of Marie Curie. Today we celebrate International Medical Physics Day to commemorate the birth of a field through the birth of an innovator, Madame Curie. Nous vous remercions. We thank you. Without you, the field would not be what it is. Thank you for tuning into this channel. I hope you were able to pick up many interesting facts about Marie Curie. Again, if you would like to subscribe, please click on my face below. And a big thank you to all those who contributed to this video.